So here we are on our sixth and final video on the GUI Hangman to, um, featuring SQL series. Um, so, so far we have made a login screen, we've um, made a register screen, we have changed the text file to be in a database in the background, so it's driven by a database, um, and now we have also, we play the game, and then when we play the game, make sure the word hasn't been selected, hasn't been guessed before, and we then write the results for that user to the database. So this is the last screen, which is also the last window on our, on our, um, user interface and this is where they can actually display the stats for the um, for the player. So let's look, what is the actual data flow that's gonna happen between our different modules? So let's bring this back up. So we have our game window, which we left off with last time. We have our controller and our data store. So it's the first thing that happens is that, well, we gotta capture the click of the this, this stat button. So that gets clicked. Um, we then send, the controller then sends the user ID to the data store. And then we need to get the number of games played from the data store, the number of games won, calculate the win loss percent. We gotta get the most frequently missed word, the most frequent missed word, and the longest word guessed. Get all that, do the calculations, and update the UI. Um, and change, update the actual figures on the UI, and then change the UI to the actual stats page. So, um, then we have a return button click, which will then take us back to the game, change the UI back to the game. So that's all the things we need to do. So within there, we have um, four, yep, we have four calls or interactions with the data store. And remember, we always start with the data store um, modules, so we can do that, run those, test them in our little um, test environment, see whether the module is running properly um, before we incorporate it into our control module. Um, and that way we know that the information being passed into our control module is correct. Which just gives us a chance to narrow any troubleshooting if we have a problem when the actual game, the full game is running. We know it's not in our data store module. So the four things we need to do is we need to get the games played, we need to get the games won, we need to get most missed games, I'm going to try the most missed word, and we're going to get the longest word. So we haven't done any of those before. They're all get methods, so I'm going to get down to the bottom of the get method here. We haven't used any of those previously or written any of those previously, so we're going to have to write all four of them today. But good, we're, we're used to writing these get methods by now. So remember, we start by defining our method. We're going to start with the get games play method. So we're going to start with that by going get games played. I need to say self as well as any um, any parameters that get passed in, any arguments that get passed in, and we have user ID gets passed in, and don't forget our um, type hint, which tells the um, tell the coder, who's us, or anyone else who uses this, calls this module, that this is actually an integer. And what are we going to return? We're going to return an integer, just simply a number of how many games have been played. So let's see, put our doc string in as well too returns the um, number of games the user has played. Okay, so I'm coming down here. Remember, again, this is an SQL command. We said query command, so there's two stages to it. Um, and the first stage with all the SQL commands is to do the execute. So we do our execute using our cursor, um, and we use the execute command. Open our um, parentheses, then open our multi-line string, so I can type in my SQL command, which is basically set count, and I'm just gonna say user ID will do. Um, user ID, so I'm gonna count the number of user ID, number of entries with that user um, from um, game, games remember i should open my data store over here there we are so make sure i'm using the right one games is correct um select count um from games and the restriction i'm going to have in here is where um user id equals and remember we need to parameterize this so i'm going to say user um user id um, which then means that my command is going to look for the dictionary, the following dictionary. So let's put that dictionary in. Open my dictionary brackets, and it was it's looking for user ID, 
and then when it finds user ID, it's going to point it to the information that's been passed in as user ID. Okay, so again, we've executed our command. Nice and easy, we know how to do that. Next stage, it's a query command, so what we need to do is we need to fetch and return the results. So, results um, equals self, remember we're using the cursor again. Um, cursor dot fetch. I'm gonna get one result, which is the overall count, so I only need to fetch one. Enter, I'm um, sorry, our parentheses at the end there, and then I'm gonna return um, results. Save that and let's go into the test environment and it was get all that and it was get um, Games played there we are I need to pass in the user ID user ID is going to be two. It's an integer like it says Okay, and let's run this and see what happens um, Yes, so it returns but again, it's returning a tuple and we only want the first element of that tuple so then I come back to the data store and I change it. So instead of returning the tuple, it returns only the first element of that tuple. Save it, test it, run it. Yep, so user number two has played 11 games. Awesome, that's great. So that's our first one of those done. We should be able to bang through these quickly because we've done so many, it's not funny. Get, our next one we're gonna do is we're going to um, get the games one. So get, um, games one I need to pass in self because we're getting it from this particular data store and again I need to have user ID radio user ID down here up oh, I forgot all my um, type hints so user ID is an int and I am returning an int okay so that's it that's better and put my doc string in and the doc string is going to say uh, returns the number of games the user has won. Okay, I've done that. This returns up so it's spelt properly. Okay, query again. Our first step in running a query, SQL query is to do the execute using cursor. Cursor dot um, execute. Um, doing our usual layout, typing the SQL in here. And again, this is select count um, user ID from uh, games where um, user ID equals and look for the parameterized value of user ID, but also, also, and also we need it where guest equals true okay so remember we've got that string value in of true come down put the second the dictionary in here which is our lookup dictionary it looks up it's looking up for the key of user id come into here and where i'm pointing user id i'm going to point it to the Argument that's passed in which is user ID up here and and that's now done. So that's number two So let's oh wait, we have just executed it now. We need to um, fetch the execution. So let's just go results um, Equals uh, self dot cursor dot Fetch one, open, close. Now we already know from the previous one that this is going to return a tuple. So I'm not even going to test it at this stage. I'm first off, I'm going to just get the first element of the tuple and see if we can return that. So return um, results zero. Okay, I'm going to save that and then come over to test and we're going to change it to get games one ah, one there we are so you can press play and again yep it's i won five games okay so user number two has won five games awesome that's our second we've got two we've got two to go so coming down the next one we're going to do is we're going to get the most missed okay so the most frequently missed word so again, we're going to define our method, making sure we've got two lines between each one. Define 
get most missed. Radio stuff the self. I need to send in the user ID it is an integer, and I'm going to return again an integer. Okay, and put our doc string in. Now doc string is going to be returns the most frequently missed word. Okay, I've come down here. It we know this because it is an SQL. We need to do the execute first, and we use the cursor for doing that. So that's for our SQL queries. And put that in, and now now this is going to be a bit of a funky. Um, it's going to be a bit of a funky SQL, but let's see. So select um, word from uh, words um, where user ID in. Sorry, no bad. Where word ID. In and now let's put the subquery in word ID in select word ID from games where user ID equals user ID our parameterized value there. Um, and um, guest equals false. Yep. And group by count word ID uh, descending limit one. So let's just go through, um, because it's a bit of a chunky one, I'll explain this one. So first off, we run the subquery first, which is going to look for a word ID. Going from games, so basically we're going to get all the games that the user has guessed, hasn't guessed. We're going to group it by a count of the word ID, so we count how many times that word appears in the games table as, the, as a false one. And then we're going to make it... Um, ordered um, descending no that shouldn't say I skipped a line here it should say order by um, order by so I should be grouped by word ID order by count word ID that's it so it's grouping by the word so we're going to group those together we're then going to have a count and we're going to order it by that count so descending so the highest number is going to be the top and lowest numbers at the bottom and then we're going to limit it to only one return value so it's going to be one word one word ID which is the word ID beside the one that most frequently is in the games table with a false tag beside it and then it's going to return that one, and then we're going to actually find what the word is for that word ID and return that word ID. So I said it's a bit of a, a, a funky little um, SQL. So I'm still going to put the lookup dictionary in here now because it's looking up for user ID. So it's looking for user ID, um, and I am looking, going to point it to the parameter gets passed in, the user ID up here, and that's done. So I've now executed my SQL, but the next thing after executing my SQL, I need to go self um, dot um, cursor dot, and again we can fetch one because we know it's only going to return one value. We're going to send those values into results equals, and then I'm going to return just the first element because I know that's actually going to be a tuple. Um, so let's just get the first element of the tuple, which is the value that I want. Get rid of that equals out there. So return result zero, the first element of the tuple. Rightio, so that's our third um, query. And now finally, um, oh no. 
Actually, I've missed something here because I forgot. What happens if you got someone who hasn't missed a word? Okay, so let's actually come back. Just so I've got my notes down here to remind me. Um, trying to go too fast ahead. Return results. Okay. So, return results. I'm going to press um, save that. Come over here and go test. So I'm going to test two again and it's going to return. Um, no, I'm going to put the right one in. Um, get get most missed for two, bang, and it returns a Resino Electric for two because two's actually missed some, right? Yes, that's good. So what about three? Has three missed any? Let's have a look. No, it's returning a none. So I just can't return the first element because if I return the first element it is of none is going to throw an error so let's go into data store back here you can see i got rid of that extra part there and now i need to we've done this previously as well we simply say um, if results equals um, none then just uh, return none else return results and the first element so if it's a no, if it's none return none otherwise of the tuple just return the first element of the tuple okay so let's save that and come across and test it bang um, so it says none, that's good. And then if I go back to two, it should just return five instead of five in a bracket. No, sorry, Resno Electric instead of Resno Electric in a tuple. Awesome, that's what we want. So now we have got that third one finished properly now. And we've got one more to go. We need to now do our method, get longest word, add self in there user id which is a integer and i'm going to return an integer go and um, now put my doc string in um, it returns the longest word um, guessed by the user okay so we've got that there, need to execute LSQL command. Cursor dot execute. Open that, bring it in here, one, two, three. Um, execute, and now I need to put my query in, which is gonna be select word um, from, so very similar to last time, I'm gonna select the word from words um where um, okay select word from words where um, word id is in a subquery the subquery is going to say select word id from games where user id equals look at the lookup dictionary oh um, user id and um sorry and guest equals true radio and then once i've done that once i've got that back i want to then order by um, length word um, descending ah, length of close the bracket there of word descending okay so I'm going to get this word going to find all the actual um, words where this user has guessed true it's going to come back it's then going to order them from the longest word to the shortest word radio um, so what we actually then want to do is we want to 
despite the fact this is going to return a whole list of words, we're going to now fetch our results. Um, results equals self dot um, cursor dot um, fetch, and I'm going to fetch one, which is going to fetch the first one, which because I've ordered it by the length of word is going to be the longest word. So I've done that. I've done fetch one return results. Um, if I haven't guessed any words, it's going to return a none. So I need to do the same thing we did up here, which is if results um, equals none return none. else return just the first element of the tuple that is results. Right, so that's one big whack. Let's have a look in here and change it from get most missed to get longest word. And I'm going to run that. Oh, it's got a problem. Incorrect number of binding supplied. The current state uses one. They are zero supplied. Ah. Oh. Silly me, I forgot to put my lookup look up table in, my lookup dictionary after here, because it's looking for the value of this, and it says, oh, there's no dictionary down here. That doesn't work. So let's put the dictionary in to keep it happy, and actually complete our code. User ID down here, and I'm going to point you to go look for the user ID, which is up here. All right, let's save that again, and test and try that. Bang. Yep, that's also the longest word, and I'm going to put in number three, because I don't think three has guessed a word either. It's just been created. And returns none. Woot! Okay, so it's now done everything that we need. So we've got our four commands. We've got our four interactions with the library. We're going to get the number of games played, the number of games won, the most frequently missed word, and the longest word. And we've got all those now, so it's time to move across to our controller, and let's go back to the beginning of here and just refresh our memory of what we do. So we need to get the stats button click. Let's grab that. So I need to make my stats button signal. So I'm moving up to my signals, which are up here around here, I think. Um, here they are, signals. Okay, so in here I need to say self.gui. Now this is on the game screen. I've got the dot, so dot UI dot um, game page or no, I'm looking for what is it? Uh, what is our stat button called? That's a really good question. No. Yeah, it's a good question. Let's have a look. I'm going to have to bring up um, PyQT because I've forgotten what I have named it. I'm just going to grab that. Okay, so I've just got, um, just opening up our u.ui in um, QT Designer. So that's it there. Radio, and I'm bringing it up into the screen. Radio, so we want to find on this screen, what's the name of this? I've just called it Stats Button. Well, that's disappointing. I should have named it. Say, actually, all these buttons are just called the standard name because they haven't got a label because that was the original window. Okay, I now understand my logic, though I hadn't previously. Um, discard. Okay, so it's just um, dot UI stats button um, dot connect. Sorry, sorry. When it's when the stats button is clicked, I want to connect um, to, and it's going to be self dot show stats. Um, yep, I think that'll work. Self dot show stats. So now I need to go down to my signals. Right down the bottom here. 
and I need to create that method. Rayo def um, show stats, awesome. And I just need to pass self. And what does show stats done? It um, displays the stats page. Now, before we actually switch pages and switch to the, the widget over to the stats widget, what I am going to do is I'm going to go through and get all the values that I need to display on the screen. So I'm going to just, I'm going to get in here, get values, radio. So I need to know played, which is the number of games that are played. So self.db.get games played for the, and it wants an integer, doesn't it? And I want to put in user, oh no, it should be self user ID. Okay, so I'm getting them. I'm also going to need to get the number of games one. Right, yeah, so that's self dot um, db dot get games one self dot um, user ID. Okay, I also need to get the longest word. So this is again all the stuff in the database that I need. Longest is self dot db dot get game no get longest isn't it get longest word self dot user id and then after that i've got most missed equals self dot db dot get most missed self dot user id okay so this those values so after i've done that i need to um, i need to calculate what i need to calculate so there's some missing stats i want to calculate here so so calculate the missing stats those i want um, I want to know how many, what's the win-loss ratio is. So if played equals zero, then, well, it's going to have no win-loss ratio. So win-loss equals zero. Um, else win-loss equals, and I'm going to round this so it doesn't go ridiculously long. 1 divided by played times 100. 1 divided by play times 100 gives me my win-loss value. I also need to work out lost, how many games I've lost. So lost equals um, played minus 1. And that's W-O-N, not O-N-E. Rightio, so 1. So now I've got those things all calculated that I want. Um, I now need to prepare the stats page before I flip to it. So I need to change all the values on the actual page. So prepare page. I'm going to say self.ui.st um, um, and I want to say name label because that's the first one I have up there and that's going to be, I'm going to set in the text for that. Um, set text and I'm going to set it to well, I want to say who the actual person is. So to get that, well, I haven't stored who the username is, but I do have the user ID. So let's just say self.db.get user, sorry, get name, get username. I thought I had get username in there. Hmm. I don't have that. Okay, so no, I haven't. So let's go back up into data store and quickly I need to make one more data store. Ah, oh, that's on the add methods, it's the get methods. So here we are. And here I thought we'd finish in here. Def um, get user um, name 
self, um, comma, user ID, which is an integer. To the end, I need to return a string. Yep. Did I say what I say up here? Did I say return string? I return. I returned an integer. That's wrong. And so is this. That's better. Ah, okay. So return that. Um, I need to put a doc string in. Okay, and say returns the user name. Come down here. I'm going to write a. Um, Execute an SQL command, so self dot um, cursor um, dot execute, and it's going to be select um, name. Let's just check over my users to get this right. Select um, name from um, from users. Uh, where user ID equals parameterize user ID. Come down here, put in my lookup um, dictionary, and it's looking for a user name, oh, user ID, sorry. And what I want to do, I want you to point you to the user ID that is up here, the method. That's done, so I've now executed my query. I now need to get the result. So results need to be fetched. So self.cursor.fetch, um, that's going to be one. And then I need to return, that's going to be a tuple. So I need to return the first element of that tuple, which is this. Because username has to be in there. If they've logged in, there's no going to be no none result. So that should work. Going to do a quick test. Um, get username. Um, and I'm going to play that. Michael, awesome. Just check. Two is demo. Done. Okay. So coming back over here. <sighs> so I need to actually add in here what the username is. Actually, let's make this neater. Let's get the value from the database up here as well. Right, so deleted that. I'm just going to say uh, name equals d, uh, self dot db dot get user name with using self dot user id as the parameter that gets passed. Right, so let's go back. I've now done the calculations. I've got the information that I need, and I'm going to prepare the page so I can actually put the page. The first element is changing the label for the name to be the value name. Right, the second one I want to do is I need to change um, the UI um, of the played label. There we are. Yeah, it's, that's played label. Dot, I'm going to set the text to, and where's the value up here? It's played. Um, but that's an integer. So played up here is an integer, is it? Pretty sure I need to change that into a string. Yeah, I do. So because it's come back as an integer, I need to change that into a string because all the labels only will display strings. Right, so set text, take play, make it into a string and install it on the label. Self dot, um, UI.st and after um, that I need to put the one value up so the one label dot set text and again this is going to be one but again it's an integer so I need to first off make it into a string string and then I put one in there um, self dot UI dot Stats and which one do I now? I'm doing lost, lost label, and I'm going to set that text. And it's going to be again because lost is an integer, I need to convert it to a string and then put lost in. That's the calculation I had here. Lost, yes, okay, you're happy now. Um, self dot ui dot 
um, ratio label I need to set that text um, set that text and again a ratio is going to be a number I need to convert it into a string and I am going to say win sorry win loss um, and I'm actually then going to add just for the sake of it I'm going to add I'm going to concatenate a percentage sign after that string so it appears as a percentage sign so a value percentage sign ratio is there um, and then you go self dot ui and on the ratios now look at the a couple of words so longest word I need to set text this is a string so now I have to convert convert it so it's going to be um, longest and then self dot ui dot st underscore most most missed and again this is going to be a string already most missed is a string so I'm just going to put that straight in there <sighs> okay so once we've done all that we have updated I'm just checking up here see how these are no longer grayed out it means that all the variables that I have created has actually have actually been used and called upon so the last thing I need to do now is I need to display the scrap the stat screen right oh, screen okay so displaying it I simply got to sit down at the end I'm gonna say call self dot UI dot stacked widget set no set current widget to self dot UI dot stats page stats page there it is there so let's save that and give it a run okay I'm gonna log in as demo go to happy login look at my stats hey look they're all there longest word most missed word uh, win loss percentage with a little percentage side at the end games lost um, games won games played return oh I haven't got the return but other than that's all there so let's just do the last bit now this is now I need to create a signal from a return button so my signals are up here that's my slots this is my signals so self dot ui dot stats return button dot connect no click sorry clicked dot connect I want to connect to self dot uh, I'm going to call this you reckon let's call this show game show game because you know what we already have the method down here called show game I'm pretty sure we have show registration show users show stats no have we got show game show registration login oh I thought we actually had that oh no we just actually ran it after login so let's just make a method down here called show game um, define show game self don't need anything past it displays the game screen come down to here and we're just going to basically say self dot ui dot um self dot ui dot stacked stacked widget dot set current widget to be self dot oh is it game screen uh, no oh, ui dot game page there we are save that let's run it yep logging in happy login stat screen return Woo! all done so now we're finished we have got our fully functional uh, improved enhanced GUI hangman game featuring SQL Lite 
Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the tutorials, and um, we'll see you for the next series a bit later on.